there is nothing more intriguing than the night sky. And being able to take an image of it that allows you to see into it more deeply than you can with your own eyes is a fantastic feeling. Hopefully this video will provide the basics in order for you to be able to get started with night sky photography. Now of course there are many, many different techniques for producing astrophotography. Using different equipment can produce different results as well, so we can't give you an exact step-by-step -step to create the perfect image. However, hopefully we can provide a good base knowledge in order for you to be able to create and build your skills as an astrophotographer. Now this time we're going to focus on taking pictures of the night sky as a whole, rather than individual planets, because that is an entirely different process. So, how much of a difference does the sky above you make to that final image you are able to capture? Well, it makes every difference in the world. Or in space. The basic rule is, the darker the sky, the better. Light pollution is not the friend of an astrophotographer. So if you have a dark skies area near you, or some empty fields in the country, then you'll be able to get a much clearer image. One of the easiest and most interesting parts of the Milky Way is south of us here in the UK. And therefore, if you want to shoot south of you, you need to make sure that that is the portion of the sky that is least affected by light pollution. For example, if you're in North London shooting south, you'll have all of the light pollution of South London to contend with. However, if you're on Brighton seafront shooting south, you'll have very little light pollution because you'll just have the channel in front of you. To get the clearest shot, you want to shoot through as little air as possible. And therefore, it is always worth shooting the zenith. The zenith is the part in the sky which is directly above your head, no matter where you are anywhere in the world. It is the part of the sky where you'll have to look through the least amount of atmosphere in order to capture your space image. And therefore, it is the part of the sky that will be least affected by light pollution. Now, when it comes to equipment, there are really no must-have kits in order to shoot astrophotography. However, there are a few must-have features in order to be able to shoot the best shot possible. Now, whatever camera you use, it must have a manual mode so that you're able to manually set ISO, shutter speeds and apertures. When it comes to sensors, a full frame is better. However, it is not a deal breaker as you can achieve perfectly great shots with an APS-C size sensor. For your lens choice, you want something nice and wide angled with a really fast maximum aperture ideally less than f3.5. You'll want a good sturdy tripod and a way to remotely trigger the camera, either using a remote, an app, or at the bare minimum, a 10 second inbuilt self timer. It's really important to remember that the limiting factor in astrophotography is the sky, not your equipment. And therefore, as long as you have a manual mode, you should be able to achieve some level of successful image. Some cameras are modified in order to make them more sensitive to certain light sources, which enhances images of space. However, it's definitely not critical to have a modified camera in order to take images of, say, the Milky Way. As an example, an ideal kit would be a Sony A7S Mark II and a Samyang 14mm f2.8. The body is only 12 megapixels, which means the pixels are big and they'll be great in low light. And the lens is wide and fast. Now here are some tips and tricks for shooting the night sky. Once you've selected the portion of the sky that you want to shoot, set up your kit and make sure your tripod is really secure. You have to take into account that the Earth moves pretty quickly, in fact 15 degrees per hour, and therefore you have to make sure your shutter speed isn't too long to avoid star trails which look like smudges on the stars in the sky. There is a rule that allows you to calculate the maximum exposure time before you start getting star trails with your setup. And it goes like this. You divide 500 by the true focal length of the lens you are using. And then the answer is the amount of seconds that you can use as your maximum shutter speed before you start getting star trails. Now this isn't an exact rule because higher megapixel sensors are more prone to star trails than lower megapixel sensors. So you'll need a shorter exposure time on those. For wider angle lenses, they increase your potential exposure time whereas telephoto lenses reduce it. And therefore, it is always worth checking all of your images, even when you're using that rule, to make sure that your exposure time is dead on. You'll need to have your lens set at the maximum aperture possible, whilst your ISO is set as low as it can be while still obtaining a good exposure. When it comes to making sure your image is focused correctly, you must remember autofocus won't work. The best thing to do is set your camera to manual focus, switch to live view and pick out the brightest star in the middle of your composition. 
zoom in, not on the lens, but using the manual focus assisting magnification on the back of your camera. And normally, when it's out of focus, it's normal for the screen to just look black. Set your lens to infinity focus, and then work backwards until you see a white blob appear. That will become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and then at one point it will start becoming larger again. That means it's going back out of focus. So make sure you set your focus when the star is at its smallest point, because that normally means it will be the sharpest point as well. You should have long exposure noise reduction turned on, but standard noise reduction turn off, as the camera can quite often mistake stars for noise. Shooting on auto white balance is normally the best option, and you can always colour correct in post. After this, trigger the camera using your remote, your app, or your 10 second self timer. All of these should help reduce any camera shake. And if you like to check your progress on a histogram whilst on a shoot, all of your images should be coming out and peaking in the first third of the histogram. Once you've shot your image, it's time to start editing. Now, if you don't like doing any post-processing, then you can just shoot in JPEG. If you do want to post-process, here are some pointers to help you bring out the best colour and detail in the stars. The main change is colour correction. You're going to want to experiment with a custom white balance in order to create a neutral colouring for further correction. It's very likely you'll need to correct for some light pollution as well. The best way to do that is to bring down your oranges and yellows within the image, and graduated filters can really help with that. You may also want to increase exposure, gently increase contrast, and very subtly adjust noise reduction and sharpening, if you apply it at all. Never aim for a jet black sky. The sky isn't black, so it looks unnatural. And if you add too much contrast, then your stars take on a jaggedness, which is really unesthetically pleasing. With some testing and experimenting, hopefully you can tailor some of the tips we've laid out here in order to get a really impressive shot of the night sky. We'd like to have shot this video under the night sky for you, but unfortunately we have had nothing but cloud and rain for the past week, so we've not been able to. However, I hope it's been really helpful, and if you have any questions further on from this, please pop a comment below, send us an email or give us a call, and we'll try our best to help you out. Thanks for watching.